that was a thing that scared me about the message from the trees. It wasn't like, we'll love you if, you know, you fight for justice, if you fight for the planet, if you, if anything, no, you don't have to do another thing. And we couldn't love you any more than we love you right now. Wow. Yes. That's beautiful. That's so it beautiful. was. <laughs> and a little bit like, and it shook my value system in a way because I was like, frankly, coming from, I owe it to future generations to fight for justice. I owe it to past generations who fought for me. Hi, I'm Biz Kush a life coach and therapist, and your host here on the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. We're talking to women all over the world who found their way back to themselves, to their inner knowing, to their intuition, to their wisest self. We're exploring how to feel alive, authentic, engaged, and fully present in your life. Let's awaken your wise woman. Hi, and welcome to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. I'm your host, Biz Kush, and I am super excited that you're here with me today. Tuning in, listening from wherever in the world you are. We recently had a huge uptick in listens from all over, literally all over the world, which is super exciting. And so if you feel inspired to share the podcast with friends, please do. I also recently had a connection with another podcaster. I reached out to be a guest on their podcast and I had not heard of their podcast, didn't know them. And they shared that they'd been listening since this podcast was Woman Warriors, that originally they'd lived in DC and found the podcast through a connection of ours. And uh, that's pretty cool. The name change of the podcast from Woman Warriors to the Awaken Your Wise Woman was over three years ago. So that's, that just blew my mind. And it's what I love about doing this is that I connect and hear from and find out about all the people that are listening all over, which is super great. I hope your new year is off to a good start. It still blows my mind that it's 2023, but we're in it. And fingers crossed, life will be simpler, easier, less confrontational, less disease and scariness, but we'll see. We will see. It's still fresh and My hopes are that this year will be a big turning point, and I hope so. I hope so. So today my guest is Amanda Kemp, and I came across her through, I think from my sister-in-law who helps with the podcast, sent me her info. At least I think that's where I, how I came across her. And I took part in her Racial Justice from the Heart program which is an amazing program where you really dive deeply into how to talk about racial injustice, how to do that from the heart, how to stay grounded in conversations with others who may not share your perspective. And it was very, very helpful, but it was also really hard. It was also challenging for me. And as I shared with her in our conversation, I ended up stepping away from the program and have since then done more work, reading, education, learning from women of color about how to be more than an ally, how to be an advocate, how to speak up and how to be more comfortable in that role, even when it's really, really uncomfortable. And that's the work for a white woman who wants to show up fully and dismantle racism at its core. It's uncomfortable and and necessary. That's it. So I so appreciate 
Amanda coming on the podcast and talking to us about what shifted in her world. Because this conversation is just amazing. It blows my mind. I It's kind of philosophical on some level. We're talking about pretty big uh, spiritual ideas and concepts, but it filled me up and I really, truly enjoyed it from my heart. We talk about communing with the trees. Amanda shares what shifted within her and her work and how that shook her to her core and that she's been called to hold space for the wise women of the world, which, of course, got to have her on the podcast. So I'm super excited. And without further ado, here's a little bit more about Amanda. Dr. Amanda Kemp, Amanada Soul Plant Walker Firewoman, is in deep apprenticeship to the earth and the feminine divine. She works with empathetic folks who are grieving and exhausted by war, rape culture, and white supremacy to do less but differently. Using art, earth mama love, and forgiveness, her clients uncover their sacred work and kiss guilt and overwhelm goodbye. She is the founder and host of the Mother Tree Network podcast and Racial Justice from the Heart. She has helped over 30,000 people have open-hearted, compassionate conversations. Let's jump into my conversation with Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Welcome to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. I'm really excited to have you on today. Thank you, Biz. Thank you for having me. Yeah, sure thing. I just want to say I have been following you, getting your emails for probably... I don't know, maybe five years. I don't know if it's been that long, pre-pandemic. A friend of mine, I think even my sister-in-law, turned me on to your stuff and took your social justice, racial justice from the heart program. And even though I kind of dropped out of that because I got so overwhelmed with my own stuff about trying to do this right and I just like, I have to just keep following you. And I have loved your, Mm. I just have loved your message and your openness and your open heartedness through emails. And I just (laughs) saw when you were getting a podcast, I'm like, I got to get her on. I have to have a conversation with you. But for folks who don't know you, I would love for you to share a little bit about you and your work and yeah, you as a person. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been around a minute before we started recording. I, I, I shared that my age was 56. Yeah. And, and I say it out loud here because I've probably been actively involved in racial justice work since I was 16. So wow. that's about four decades. And wow. so I have journeyed with this through various peak times, through times when it felt like nobody else was really holding this, meaning not other African Americans, when it felt like European Americans were not really holding this as a priority issue. I've journeyed through that. I've journeyed through the incredible crisis moments, you know, such as the murder of George Floyd. Yeah. So it's been a ride. It's been an emotional ride, a spiritual ride. So I guess what I want people to know about me is that my PhD is in the performance of race and looking at how we've conceptualized race um, Mm -hmm. historically over time in this culture, but also inside of South Africa. Okay. And then I created my company, Racial Justice from the Heart, in 2015, and it is now 2022, 23. So it's been a good seven years of learning how to be an entrepreneur as a way to carry a message that is very close to my heart. So walking that path of finding prosperity and spiritually and emotionally, morally staying in alignment. That's also been quite a journey. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can kind of feel just from you sharing that, the powerfulness, but also the potential heaviness of it too. Yes. 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 And I think it's that heaviness with riding the waves. I think it's the heaviness that took me in the direction that I'm in right now, which is really in a deep apprenticeship to the earth. 
yeah, to holding this in a longer timeline. And I've before heard it before previously been thought about, yeah, to, to step back from it, like not just from the United States or even from global to, you know, looking at it from a solar system wide lens. I mean, I'm really just stretching myself, blowing my own mind hmm. with how to contextualize this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because one of the questions I talk about sort of like mother earth and our celestial world, because I feel that coming yes. from you too, like that there's this bigger picture. I listen to, I think it's the most, and maybe not today the most, but on Sunday, the most recent episode of your podcast, the mother tree, is it called the mother tree network podcast also? Yes. Yes. Just about your really feeling drawn to that there's this message that the trees need to give you and trying to figure out how to put yourself in nature to hear it and what is it that's coming through. And I just, I don't know, it really resonated with me because I feel as if sometimes I spend a lot of time walking in nature that I can feel, I've never said this out loud, but it's true, feel the pain of the trees that with pollution and our environment and nobody paying attention. And mm. I don't know. So I just wanted to say that, yeah, that that episode really moved me. I don't think it's accidental that I am at this G, this physiological age, you know, this chronological age, this age in my body where I'm switching from where I have switched from being a childbearing woman, a woman who can bear children to being a, in that next physical level of expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of a sudden having this openness, this ability to perceive plant intelligence. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you said to, you, you were saying you sounded a little sheepish, like, I don't know if it's true, but I hear these <laughs> messages. I mean, how many millions of us are out there going, I don't know if it's true, but I'm hearing things. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's two things I want to say. So one is suppose it is true. Suppose we just say, hey, this is true. Just like you heard something on the radio, you heard something on Joe Rogan's podcast. Well, you know, you heard something from the trees when you were taking a walk. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you got something yeah. on the airwaves. Yeah. What if that's possible? And we should just say, hey, I heard something from the trees. And then the second thing is, it's okay if we're hearing different things. Yeah. Maybe we will hear common messages, but maybe sometimes we'll be hearing different things mm -hmm. and they will be coming from different parts of the world, different, different plants, different forests, times, but also who we are, the listener may affect the message, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? We're yeah. so used to thinking about truth as like absolute and singular. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm saying I'm blowing my mind. <laughs> but, I'm just but blowing my mind. <laughs> I, I love I love that you're blowing your own mind, but it I'm, blows me away too to be like, okay, so what are we open to? What What are we as individuals open to receiving? And maybe for you, it's different than it is for me. Yes. And so you said you heard, did you say you heard grief? Yeah. 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 So you heard grief. Yeah. For me, the predominant message that I get from trees is love. It's mm. just expressions, <laughs> expressions of endearment. I love that. Yes. And, and I, so maybe it's kind of like, maybe because that's what I need to hear. Yeah. You knew, you know, maybe I need to hear more of that. And yeah. to vibrate that mm -hmm. because of what I'm doing in the world, right. you know, where I stand. And some of us maybe need to be in the space of grief, of holding the grief and processing grief or transmuting grief yeah. or shame or anger. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want us to take ourselves 
kind of like believe ourselves, but understand that we don't have to be absolutists. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a beautiful thing to take away because when you get too granular or stuck in the absolute, it doesn't leave a whole lot of openness for whatever else might come through. Well, that's true too, because thank you. Because tomorrow what I hear may be different than what I've heard in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So can you share with us, you know, we're talking about sort of being in nature, listening to the trees, communing with, you know, ourselves and what's coming out, coming to us. But how did you shift? What was that story of shifting from primarily doing this racial justice work? And I mean, one core message that I hear in all the things you do is like, it comes from love. Like there is this message of love there, which I just truly appreciate too. But could you share with the listeners what caused your shift? In- yeah, I've been asked about this. It feels kind of personal, you know, a little vulnerable to share. So, yeah. but I'm ready. It's been a while. Like I said, it's been a good 18 months, almost two years now. Mm-hmm. And I think what happened was that Previously, I've been very comfortable and sometimes even super juiced, like energized and in a very good energetic space from going to demonstrations and marches and protests. I have previously loved the power of people being expressed in that way Mm -hmm. and, you know, the cry for justice. But in 20. 18, I think 2019, I started to feel differently at these kind of bigger events. So whereas in 2015, I was at a die-in in in my community, just raising awareness about the killing of Eric Garner, I Can't Breathe, and just, just a lot of people. So one of the ways that people demonstrated and made a public voice about this was to gather in places like malls and hospitals and at a given signal, just drop down to the ground. Yeah. And yeah. for six minutes or whatever, however long it took for someone to be killed to just hold that space and just like ask the rest of the community to imagine this. Yeah. To stop and pay attention. Yeah. So that felt right for me. It was hugely emotional and it felt just right for me at that time. But Fast forward like three years later, four years later, and I would find myself at vigils and public demonstrations and feel like I was in the wrong place. Mm. Uh, I would feel like I don't agree with the chants. Like we would be saying things like, I can't breathe, which were the last words of Eric Garner before he was killed by police. Yeah. Or what was a crime being black, for example. Yes. And what I found with repeat, what I found with my understanding of energy was that repeating those words was bad for me and bad for us. Yeah. It meaning mm-hmm. when I say bad for me, I mean, it's like feeding your body a frequency through the water you carry, through your subconscious, however you want to understand these things, mm-hmm. a message that was in fact weakening. You know what I mean? Actually I undermining us yeah. and undermining our connection to bigger energy. So what I'm saying is that I started to like feel like, okay, I need to do something different. I don't belong in the spaces where I was before. Mm-hmm. And the other difference for me, the other big shift happened when I was in a, uh, coaching session regarding my business, which had really blown up and expanded after the killing of George Floyd. But what I wanted to do was stop, but I felt like I couldn't. Everything was propelling. Every program we did led to the next one. And there were a lot of people who were involved and I felt like I had to do things. Yeah. And I was at the session when my true self was speaking, what my true self said 
is Amanda needs to stop everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said it to myself three times. <laughs> yeah. And I also said, which was a complete surprise to me, is that I even wrote down here, I have it on my whiteboard. The trees want to talk to her. They want to adopt her. Wow. I was so puzzled by this message. And the other thing that was said, that I said to myself, this is like, I am not, I was not hypnotized. <laughs> I was, you know, I was just in a light meditation talking to a business coach who just right. helped you to reach to your, yeah, below your, on a consciously yeah. egoistic <laughs> mind, right? <laughs> right, right. So, and the, the other thing I said to myself is that my work was not analytical teaching, but to get closer to the ground, to deep, earthy vibrations. Wow. So the session happened and it was recorded, which coaching sessions often are. So thank God, because I could go back and really hear myself say these things again. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't go, that was just, uh, that wasn't really me. Right. Right. <laughs> it was, yeah. And I listened and I decided to listen to myself and start to really engage with the trees and on the land that I steward, we in the bank quote unquote, own three quarters of an acre in a suburb, <laughs> but it just happens to be a very green suburb mm -hmm. and it's a double lot. So half of our lot just has trees on it. It does not, you know, it's, it just so happens. Yes. I just started to journal with the trees and sit out there and feel very awkward and weird and exposed and afraid. But I stayed with it. And I just got these beautiful little messages of, mm. like I said, of endearment. So sweet though, like to think about, I don't know, to me, the idea that the trees are seeing you and loving you and appreciating you for you. Yes. Without me having to do anything else. Yeah. That was a thing that scared me about the message from the trees. It wasn't like, we'll love you if, you know, you fight for justice, if you fight for the planet, if you, if anything, no, you don't have to do another thing. And we mm -hmm. couldn't love you any more than we love you right now. Wow. Yes. That's beautiful. That's so it beautiful. was. <laughs> and a little bit like, and it shook my value system in a way because I was like, frankly, coming from, I owe it to future generations to fight for justice. I owe it to past generations who fought for me. You, Biz, owe it to my Black children to stand for justice. Absolutely. There was just a lot of owing and obligation mm -hmm. in my feeling, even if it wasn't in my speaking. It was implicit. Yeah. And then with this, all this messaging about... We love you. We don't need you to save us. I mean, really? <laughs> I was like, I can tell no one what you people are saying to me. No one, except maybe my husband. Yeah. You know, yes. Because I don't know how this fits into racial justice from the heart. I don't know how this fits into justice, what you're saying to me. Huh. So that's been my journey is like, opening to accept, to believe yeah. what I'm getting and to try to understand. So what does it mean in terms of my own work in the world? The stories that I tell, what does it mean that for me, what I'm hearing is earth mama not saying, save me, save me. That's not what mm -hmm. I'm hearing her say. Now I'm not counteracting what anyone else's message was. Sure, sure, um, sure, sure. That was not what she was asking me for. No. She was not asking me to save her. Not asking you to do anything, but just be you. Yeah, she really, to really accept my lovableness, my love, my loveness and rest, relax. These are not like activist words. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, and and what was the, I was going to say, what was it like to share this with the people you've been working with on social justice forever to be like, 
Yeah. The trees well, are telling me I need to rest. And relax. Yeah. yeah. Well, the people in my closest circle, my inner circle, like the other facilitators I was working with are over very spiritual people. I mean, because if you think about it, who would be attracted to me this are kind true. of people who have some kind of vibrational accord alignment, right? Absolutely. So they were like, oh yeah, you're having a spiritual situation. It's scary doing things without you, but yeah, we're willing to step forward. We're willing to step up. We're willing to step mm -hmm. up, Amanda, and do more teaching inside of the program. So I stopped teaching. Yeah. I stopped mentoring people. Yeah. Um, I stopped training other people to be trainers, meaning I just sort of really took it on to mm. Amanda needs to stop everything. I, I literally gradually ground to a halt. And that has involved a lot of tears of, well, what do I do now? Tears of relief, yeah, of feeling love, of feeling afraid. Like, what will my community be? Sure. How do you be for justice when you're like, no one, like the message I got, honestly, Biz, was that nobody had to bust their ass. <laughs> Nobody had to like, I, I mean, honestly, that's why I wasn't telling people. I was just like, I need to just sit with this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because it's so opposite of, I know there is a place for people busting their ass around this too, but I hear you how different that message must have felt for you. It did. And I'm still like understanding it. And like I said, not approaching it as an absolute thing, but mm -hmm. more like, hmm, if this is true, then what? Yeah. How do we do, how do we be with each other? And so this, like this experiment of, is it only anger that can make me act? Mm. Is there like a, a natural flow of love that produces actions that lead to justice? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And are we on a bigger timeline? Are we in a multiple, are we, are there multiple dimensions that are affecting the dimension we're in the timeline that we're in? Right. Like, right. I'll just say one more thing in, on the blowing my mind category. I was in a, uh, on a retreat um, in a solstice group community I'm a part of. And one of the strong messages that came through, and I, I think it may have come through me or just resonated deeply with me. Okay. And it was a message that said, we have won. The only thing that delays our experience of the liberation that we seek is how we carry on now. When we carry on with anger and fear and hate, we actually delay the wow. liberation. Wow. So this is like, again, in the category of, well, I don't know who else I would talk to this about. <laughs> so let me just, you know, put that into my journal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, it feels so powerful and yet so scary too in many ways. Like, okay, so what, what does that mean if it's not about anger and pushing almost, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And what does it mean for like people who are walking, carrying a lot of privilege right now? What does it mean? Like, what is the message for them? Is this message for me and for, you know, people like me, for women of color, for black people, for black women? Yeah. Yeah. For, is it? Is it that I'm in this age that I've shifted to the age of being like a crone or a wise woman? So now, mm -hmm. now this is the energy that I must hold. Right. So yes. I'm, I'm like very open to like, hmm, because mm -hmm. not everybody's heat flashing out here. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just coming to it with an open, curious sort of like, okay, let's see what's next. It sounds like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's see what's next. And I do not, I do not know. 
But there has been a next in your work. I mean, you've created this beautiful Mother Tree Network community and the podcast. And so talk to me about that. What is the Mother Tree Network? Yeah, so it's evolving. I'm discovering Mm -hmm. what it is. So I feel like for me right now, my work is to use this podcast to really talk to lots of people, Mm -hmm. right? To stir up things, Mm. not just with my own experiences, but with other wise people, wise women, particularly with what's emerging for them as wisdom right now. And to invite people to support that financially, right? And and there are ways to do that. And then the other work for me is to align myself with people who I'm calling, I'm calling like sister queens. That is mm-hmm. other women who are founders or holders of knowledge or medicine, and it's unconventional. And our job is to hold that space. And somehow, and, and my specific working with that group is to reinforce us, is to say yes. When people say, I don't know, maybe this is not true. No, it's to say, let's believe you for the moment. And you know what I mean? It's just like to create that space. Yeah. Just as you did with me around the trees. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can say what is emerging as truthful and do that sacred work, Mm. even if others haven't caught up or if it's not the work of other people or it's countercultural to the work that we used to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting just thinking about that for myself, you know, I'm a therapist and I'm a life coach and there's this, what got me sort of shifted into wanting to be a life coach was that to bring in non-traditional, more expressive embodied ways of getting to know your own truth, right? To really tapping into your own wisdom. And not that I can't do that in therapy space, but there are more, there's more rules and kind of regulations about what you should and shouldn't be doing. Like you shouldn't bring in a deck of Oracle cards in your therapy session, stuff like that, right? But I've found it so meaningful for my own personal work that I just feel like it feels important to share that elsewhere too. and. So anyway, I hear what you're saying and I'm just grateful that you're out there pushing forward with this work. Yeah. And I appreciate what you said about the distinction as a life coach and as a therapist and the regulations and the the structures that you operate within as a licensed therapist. Yeah. And when you step out of that, when you put your foot in another flow. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's more unknown stuff. Yeah. Unknown yeah. stuff over there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also fun. It is. It I is mean, fun. You know, I was th- you just brought up an Oracle deck and I have gone years without using that and then lately ever since this whole thing with the trees wanting to talk to me. I don't know. Now I have I think three Oracle decks in my house. Yeah, that are mine. <laughs> me too. <laughs> All of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess for me, the big thing that's emerged lately in this journey is, well, Earth Mama, really feeling like Earth Mama yeah, and Divine Feminine. Yes. You know? Me too. Yeah. Oh like my gosh. Celestial Divinity Feminine and Earthy Mama. I was just saying to myself today, you know, something that really felt truth is true to me in my body that was vibrating powerfully was earth mama is me Mm. earth mama is me Mm. i was just like wow because that felt something i was like well what does that mean it's like i'm an expression of her yeah all of us are it's not singular but yeah but you're hearing it and feeling it in a different way yes with some consciousness right right Right, right, which is very different Anyway, so there's a lot of stuff going on over here. Like, and I feel like 
what's really hard, and maybe mm. this is also why I want to have this Sister Queens, I'm calling it Sister Queens and the Tree, actually, <laughs> this oh little formation gosh. of us, this doesn't fit in a specific religion right. or institutional path. It's non-institutional. Mm-hmm. So if sometimes it feels lonely or yeah. singular, yeah. but it's not really. It's just right. that we don't really, we there sort of a- haven't found each other and yeah. aren't holding. Yeah. Yeah. There isn't that structure where you go to meet because it hasn't been built yet. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I just love hearing about all the things that are coming through you. I think at this time in your life, it really feels so powerful. And as I said, just each email that I get from you, it just resonates with me. And I'm just really feeling your mother tree network and this transition for you. I'm feeling it in me, you know, maybe not in the same way, but Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There's probably a lot of us out here Mm -hmm. who have professions and I don't know, worldviews that are, that have been like, just kind of blown up. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, and I find that these are the people that I'm turning to for whether it's coaching or mentoring or also connecting here on the podcast. Like just, I just want to, all these sister Queens that are out there, I want them here. I want to talk to them. I want to know what they know. I want to hear what they're experiencing and share that out there in the world, because I feel like there's so much wisdom that women have that we tamp down or hold in or feel, I don't know, strapped in some way that we can't be fully ourselves and Mm. we need it. We need Mm. it, that energy. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had a piece or pieces of wisdom that you felt was really important to share with the listeners today, what would that be? When you said that, what I heard is that the earth doesn't need saving. You do. Wow. And that redemption process is about getting into relationship with her and therefore with yourself. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's as simple as walking and saying thank you or listening rather than having your phone on when you walk. Yeah. Saying thank you is huge. And I yeah. know sometimes it's so hard when you feel bad. Sometimes it's so hard to to really feel a thank you. But if you go out and you walk and you just, you hear a woodpecker or you see some deer unexpected or oh, a mushroom, yeah. you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. oh, thank you. They're like your, you know, maybe they're your cousins or they're, Maybe they're just little gifts to remind you, Mm -hmm. even though you don't know a lot, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Even though it feels like the world is a scary place. Yeah. It's, you're still part of something, you know, that Mary, um, Mary Oliver poem, wild Mm -hmm. geese. Oh yeah. 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 Didn't you just share that in an email? I did. I did. And it really is that line when she says, no matter who you are, however lonely, you have a place in the family of things. Mm. And she's such a, an amazing poet in that whole idea in the family of things, mm-hmm. not just of other human beings, but all of we. So yeah. yeah, I think whether it's looking up at the sky and feeling that sense of wonder and gratitude yeah. and connection, or if it's more earthy looking more closely around you Mm -hmm. and seeing things that earth mama has created more so than the creations of human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's our work right now. I do too. Just to feel that connection with the earth and our universe, as you said at the beginning, this, this whole thing that we're a part of. Yes, we're humans on this planet, but there's so much there that we just don't even, many of us don't take in or see or feel. And I've come to, uh, I take my dog out at night 
to go to the bathroom one last time. And I always look around at least for a star, but hopefully the moon and just be like, I see you. Good night. You know, just if you like, I feel something there and um, yeah, it helps me feel connected to just being here as a part of this family of things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. Uh, I think the other piece is as anger comes, like really befriend it. Don't immediately yeah. externalize it mm. or, or take an external action. Yeah. Because the action really befriend it to see what is the action that your body wants you to take. You might mm. be surprised. So like, for example, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, mm. I was checking in with myself on a walk mm. and my anger did not want me to go to a protest or do any of those actions. Mm -hmm. My anger was saying, it wanted, my body was saying, stand up, hold your head high. Mm. Don't change your tone when you talk to men or when you talk to white people, like, yeah. Um, yeah. respect yeah. yourself. Right. You know, stand in your truth. Yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. So again, at this stage in my life, it's very important for me to acknowledge and befriend anger to find out what is the gift? What is the message it wants me to, it has for me. And to be willing, not know what I used to know, or not go to the old answers. Yeah, yeah. You know, but to allow new answers to come forward, even if they seem inadequate or not as good as other people's answers. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, or a little scary, or like, yeah, unknown. Like, okay, what does this mean? Yeah, yeah. I think we really do need to sink down and again, but I also feel like we need community, <laughs> like, a, like a sister degrees in the tree, like to really help us to hear what we're saying and to talk with each other about it. Yeah. It's safe. It's private. Not even so, you know what I mean? But you can like, it's a yeah. safe, a trusted space. Yes, 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 yes. To yes. explore this yeah. and nobody's going to shut you down while you're in the exploration. It's almost like the problem that with social media is that, and in a lot of spaces, it's unacceptable to experiment out loud. You know what I mean? And to, I do. yeah, yeah. To sort yeah. of work through or test it out or yes, yeah, float an idea or right. without getting like, who do you think you are? Da, da, right. Da, 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 or whatever. Because, yeah. you know, and then I was thinking, of, I mean, there's so many because there's, there's like, I think they're vested interests in keeping us in a state of outrage. Yeah. And wow. so when you, <laughs> when you kind of like are, when you're not in that box and then you're very vulnerable, I feel very vulnerable. Where do you stand? Are you opting out? Right. Are you selling right. out? Right. So. Right. Are you quitting? Are you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you quitting? Why? Are you taking your yeah. privilege or are you just letting your, you know, whatever it is, your fear or your whatever. Yeah. So I think we do need spaces to ask the uncomfortable questions of ourselves from what we used to know. So that was so true that maybe now we're like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, I have truly enjoyed our conversation and I really thank you for sharing. Yeah. Your, your story, but your, your openness and I guess in some ways too, your vulnerability around how this journey has been for you. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And if people want to know how to find you, how do they do that? Yeah, you can go to dramandakemp.com or you can go to the Mother Tree Network podcast. It's on all the places where you can get a podcast. 
Yeah. And Dr. Amanda Kemp, Dot com is dramandakemp.com. Excellent. I will include the links to the podcast and your website and the opt-in you shared with me for the meditation. I will share all of those in the show notes. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your wisdom. You're welcome. Before I jump into my impressions and feelings about my conversation with Amanda, I just have to own up that uh, as I was recording, I must have been so focused on how I was feeling, which is lovely, but I didn't even realize that my dog constantly barks in the background. So heads up, I apologize for that up front, and uh, hopefully it's not too distracting. Oh my gosh, I love this work. I love being being able to interview soul-filled, open-hearted women who are filled who just have so much wisdom and depth and to be able to walk through conversations about transformation and change and returning to our original wisdom, our divine wisdom, our most authentic selves to be able to show up in the world in ways that maybe feel a little bit uncomfortable or different. But anyhow, this conversation with Amanda just, ah, it was so beautiful. I had questions all written out and I, I didn't look at a single one because the flow was so natural and organic that it was easy to just follow my intuition and listen and follow the flow of her energy. And it was beautiful. I hope that you too took away some nuggets of wisdom and awesomeness from this conversation. I just really appreciated too her sharing how vulnerable it was to step away or step in a different direction from the one she had been on for so long. And, and I could just see the energy flowing from her around this transformation, around this transition in her life. And to be a part of that, to hear her story was really powerful. So I look forward to connecting next time on the podcast with all of you. If you have thoughts about this episode, want to share your insights, send them along. I would love to hear from you. Would love to hear your stories and your takeaways from the episode. You can DM me on Instagram or send me an email, which you can find through the podcast at awakenyourwisewoman.com. Also, if you want to be on the mailing list, so the podcast episodes come directly to your inbox twice a month, just go to elizabethcushcoaching.com forward slash sign up. All one word, sign up. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I look forward to connecting here next time. Thanks for listening to the Awaken Your Wise Woman podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music by Andy Cush, sound editing by Laura Disler, and show notes by Kathy Cush. If you'd like more information about me, Biz Cush, and the resources shared today, go to awakenyourwisewoman.com.